Hey, what's up everyone? Jeremy here. So when you think about a programming language, you probably don't think about how it's made. And the way a programming language is made usually comes down to one thing, and that's a programmer doing the same thing over and over again. That they realize, okay, you know what, I can streamline this if we just did this. And I'll clarify this a bit throughout this tutorial. Today we have streamlined programming languages. So certain functions that are more common to code will be easier to achieve without having to write out a load of ones and zeros like you would in machine code, which I'm sure most of you have seen. So instead of having to communicate with every single bit of information with ones and zeros and target all of this, which if you would think about for a moment, that, that is a lot of information that you have to manually put in, not to mention how much room it would leave for error. So we can simply group these extremely specific actions that the machine code would use together and rewrap them into a more sophisticated package. By doing this, we create a programming language that isn't just more readable for people, but these new children of machine code allow for much quicker coding. And that's what we end up with this assembly code, which is what you see in front of you. You know, it, it looks much easier to read. You can almost break it down if you don't have any coding or much coding experience. Bottom line, though, it's much easier to read than machine code, period. A very small bit of information, for instance, in machine code to do one single action that might do one simple thing that you might have to do 10 of these things to do one larger thing that's, you know, you can do those 10 in this language with one little small thing. But if you have to do those 10 things, you're going to end up with a crap ton of code. You know, on that matter, imagine how much quicker you can type all that out if you don't have to do all the ones and zeros. So the improvement from machine code to assembly is extensive, saving tons of time, and you're not going to make the little mistake because if I accidentally put a one here instead of a zero here, and then, you know, that's going to totally switch up some stuff. That's, that's going to be a big error if it was machine code, and you can't have that, and it happens. So well, happened. Nobody uses machine code really anymore, but regardless, without machine code, we would not have assembly nor any of the other languages that we have today. Although different computer languages sometimes seem worlds apart from another, deep down they are the same. Veiled machine code. Pretty much any computer language that is not machine code needs to be compiled so it can be translated into machine code. So aside from the language itself though, what about the people that created these languages? I want to address this. When it comes to the leaps and bounds that programming languages have achieved over the many decades, there are three people among many that I want to emphasize on how they helped achieve these accomplishments in this industry. So let me bring you back to 1949 and a proposal given from this man, John Mockley, sparked the beginning of high-level programming languages. This gave way to the other languages we know of today. C, Java, JavaScript, Perl, one could argue without him, we wouldn't have any of the languages, at least in their state right now. They might be back a few decades, or, you know, we don't know. But this man caused a turning point in computer science. If you know anything about the coding language C++, then you should know who this guy is. This man is Bjorn Strustrup, invented C++, which is the programming language C, but with object-oriented programming as well. This would come to be one of the most stable and widely used computer languages to date. C++ is what most video games run on, and it is a fairly old language. I'm talking decades old, and this still kicks the butt out of pretty much anything in this area. Alright, so let's talk Java. I doubt you can research programming languages for more than five minutes without running into this thing called Java. Not JavaScript. We can owe Java to James Gosling who was working at Sun Microsystems at the time. And for this contribution and creating this amazing language that so many people use, he was elected as a foreign associate member by the National Academy of Engineering. Without these guys and many other integral people, we wouldn't have the computer languages as well as the technology we have today. So that's pretty much a runabout on how computer programming languages were made and a little bit on why everything sits how it sits today. So as always, thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Feel free to leave a comment down below and I will see you in the next video.